when my kids are at school and at university, then the daytimes um, would be uh, they're, they're at school. And if I'm working in the evening, then I'll never get to see them at all. And so I, I, I did actively not do any theatre for um, a long period of time because of my children. Uh, and um, I was hungry, really hungry to get back to it. And this uh, opportunity came at a, at a perfectly good time. Both my girls were uh, either at university or in further studies that um, meant that I was, uh, yeah, I was able to just rekindle my affair with the, the, the boards, treading the boards. I was originally, um, um, they asked for me in the very original uh, lineup for the show, uh, but I was working, so I couldn't do it. And it would have been interesting for me to have come in at the very beginning of it, uh, because I then had the, uh, the double-edged sword of joining a show that was already running, and some of the members were still going to be in it. And so I worried about there not being quite so much leeway for my interpretation. Um, but when we started rehearsing with Tim Hoare, who is the assistant director, who is a wonderful, wonderful, and is going to be incredibly big uh, um, director, he let us find our own weight of the thing. And I was loath to be too led by their production that was already on. Um, it's very difficult. You go and see something and then you are going to fit into it it might make you lose some of the things that you would have found yourself. And so I went to see the play once before I decided that I wanted to do it. And I was a, a, a quite, quite, I was quite, I was quite, it was quite important to me that I didn't um, take away a template that I was to work on. So I watched it with a kind of, with half my eyes going, right, okay, again, I saw things that I thought didn't work, and I saw things that did work, but I didn't want to see it again, I didn't want to get even the positioning exactly right, I wanted to feel what felt natural during rehearsals, and that happened, and then whilst we were rehearsing, um, then Sam came in, but then Sam's new wife um, was heavily pregnant and about to give birth, and he went off to go and deal with that. So we were left with this beautiful, warm cuddle of a world that we had evolved. And um, and it was slightly, only slightly, at odds with maybe what Sam had signed off on uh, all that time ago. But um, when they came and saw it, and when we did the dress rehearsal, Sam was there and the writer was there and Jez was absolutely, um, was, was, was totally taken with some of the new colours that he'd seen. But this is a committee. And, you know, there's Sam and there's Jez and then there's Sonia Friedman, the producers, and yada, 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 yada. And there's a whole host of things that come to bear on that. What you need to do is you need to get your... You need to get some of the things that might be at slight odds with what their uh, first ideas were. You need to try and make it work. It's like when you turn up for a film part, you're sort of taking with you something that you've uh, prepared to try and make them see it your way. And you hope that then they will go, actually, that was quite a nice thing. We might actually change the shot now because of that, that, that. So you, 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 you throw them with your stuff and you hope that some of your little things that you know that are effective for you as an actor and also for the part uh, will stick. There were some people who were still uh, on the book. There were some people who weren't. And there were some people who um, were in the original cast. So and there was, sometimes there was a stage manager standing in for um, one of the actors who's still in the play, but they were doing a matinee and they couldn't be there for the rehearsal. And there were several bits of uh, um, post-it notes in various parts of the set in the rehearsal room, which were supposed to be the other actors. Because of course, the, sometimes the, the scene is full of maybe you know eight or nine of the family. 
and we didn't have them there for the rehearsal so we were actually acting with post-it notes looking over at the chair over there or at the wall there where someone was supposed to be standing so it was quite a disembodying experience because we didn't we didn't have a full complete cast to rehearse with until um maybe a week before we opened and that was just for that one and uh and then in the last two days or something we did but you know they were working sometimes doing seven hours of the play during the day and uh, sure we couldn't have them for rehearsal so we had stage managers with books and it's very some, sometimes very difficult when i when i was doing my my uh proposal speech when you hear the audience buying into it with the ahs and oohs or the silence or the something or other you're tempted not to not to gild the lily not to overdo it but to stick with the things that worked for you that night so you do get mm -hmm. tempted down a, a different route uh, for some people in shows like this um, not necessarily shows like this but in theatre shows when they find a little something that makes the audience spark up they might try and ham it up they might try and get more laughs they might try and stamp their foot and put their arm out and the temptation is sometimes could, could lurch towards the comic and not the right kind of comic mm. and i've seen this in loads of shows and there were times uh, apparently uh, with previous casts and things like that where it, it became comic in the wrong way and that's because the west end crowd we would go for a bit of comic the wrong way, you know? Something that was a little more akin to uh, to light entertainment. And the ferryman isn't light entertainment. Jez was relaying a story which was from, it was from his, uh, his wife. Uh, she knew this tale. She had told him this story and had, he had decided that that needed to be told. It is a bit long, let's be honest. That's a that's three and a half hours, and um, not to put too fine a point on it. And if the audience aren't enthralled, they're going to be in pain. Their buttocks are going to hurt. You know those little seats in the uh, in the Gielgud, uh <laughs> They're certainly not built for me. When I was in there, I was in agony, and I had a couple of people next to me. And in the second half. When there's that little pause, people stood up and then instantly the ushers were on them saying, no, you can't leave, you know, we're all staying in here. People weren't standing up because they were desperate to get out. They were standing up because their bums had gone to sleep. Their minds were active as hell. Mm. But there were, there were people there who were, uh, well, had to enter their colostomy bags. You know, there's a lot of, uh, that's, that was a big, big, a big investment of time for an audience. I personally am much of the school of thought where, like, it, like that play Art that was in the West End, I think it was an hour and ten, no interval, and you sit there and it could, it's shorter than even sometimes most first halves. But if you can tell a story in that sort of time, I'm a happy bunny. Because for a start, you get out before the rushes get out and you can get a supper and go home. So in a perfect world, uh, that play is too long. But I say that, and look at it, it's done rather well. And it is beautiful. It's, it's got so many fantastic elements, and it's got so many flashy things. But the spectacle of that many people, just simply the spectacle of those people coming down from this impossible staircase in the gods, and babies, and filling up the stage like that with this... Um, just this kitchen room, um, a spectacle, wonderful, wonderful. And also the kids, you know, fantastic stuff for the kids, fantastic stuff for the oldie goldies, fantastic um, ethereal, spiritual art, Maggie type business, provocative, thought, thought provoking. Um, it was a pleasure to be in, pleasure to be in. But I couldn't have done longer than uh, the amount of time I did. It was exhausting and um, you always think, it's one of the things that, uh, that I was told when I was at the National Theatre for 18 months, that, yeah, yeah, but you'll be able to squeeze in voiceovers during the day, you'll be able to go for meetings, and you have time off in the, 
at the national. You know, there are days when you don't do this, that, and the other. You don't squeeze in anything else. You, 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 I did a big show called Ghetto there. That was another long one, and it was a very long, serious one. And um, and you think that you know you haven't got a massive part in it, but you're in it. Everyone's in it for the whole way through. And you think that you will go home and then you can rest and then you can go out and you know, mow the lawn, fix your garden up, do bits and bobs and then go into work. Whereas you actually find yourself, surprisingly, lying in bed like a starfish until the last possible minute thinking, well, I guess I've got to go in now. And then you go in a bit early, you dicker about with this, that and the other. But your whole day contracts around it because it's yeah. all about that. It's all about that. 